Hello, welcome to the channel. I'm Amanda and today we are here with everything I know about digital art. Now it's not going to be absolutely everything because digital art is very, very vast and there are a lot of things to do with digital art that I could tell you but I do plan on making more videos mm -hmm. that are related to certain things to do with digital art. I'm going to assume that you are a traditional artist and you are going into digital. I don't know why but I feel like most people start traditionally and then go into digital but I think that we're coming to an age where people start digitally and then go into traditional I don't know because obviously it's a very technological world these days but let's get into the tips shall we or the things that I know so number one is that you do not need the best tools to create digital art um, and you 100% do not need Photoshop. It is nicer to have a tablet that you can draw on the screen with but you really don't need it and you can create some awesome art with just a tablet that you don't have to uh, look at the screen. It's just like a disconnected tablet as you would say like you draw on the pad and you look at your monitor. Those are really great. I used them for years. I had a Wacom. You don't have to even have a Wacom. You can have a really cheap, cheap one. They are really good tablets and I do highly suggest them if you want to get into digital art. But it is better for me and nicer for me to draw digitally on a screen that I can see where my pen is going. I just prefer it and it did step up my digital game quite a bit. But like I said, you don't need to, as long as you know what your hand is doing and you know where your hand is going, you can draw digitally on another tablet, so like a tablet like that. So don't worry about the software too much. You can always get free programs, uh, sorry, the hard, <laughs> don't worry about the hardware too much. And you can also get free programs to use to draw in like Krita and Auto desk sketchbook that's another program that's really good but yeah you don't really need expensive things to get started and obviously you can upgrade them as you go like I did I started with a small digital tablet and then I upgraded to an iPad and then after after that I bought a desktop thing as well number two is that thumbnails are useful now this is sort of to do with normal digital uh traditional art as well as digital but i feel like the more you figure out how to draw something in the way that you want to draw it and you plan it out the more it comes out the way that you want it in the end so draw a little tiny thumbnail figure out the composition do color swatches uh, do multiple thumbnails of the same thing in different positions and different ways and all that stuff and then draw a bigger thumbnail and figure out the details and all that stuff and then do your final illustration and you can do as many thumbnails as you want before you go into your final illustration but I think that thumbnails are definitely a good thing to do because they just they are better to to use. So number three is there's a benefit to working in digital. You don't really have to care about whether to work in dark to light or light to dark. You can do it in any order. I tend to work from mid-tones to dark and then to light. I always do the lights last, mid-tones first, the darker ones second. Don't know why, I've just always done that. But that means that sometimes I forget to put in my darks, my darkest darks, or my effects layer, as it were. Like, for instance, I recently did a drawing of Katie and Charlie, and I also drew a little cassette tape necklace on Katie, and I was going to put a little see-through panel on that necklace, and I forgot to do it because it was the last thing that I was going to do. So do the things that you think you're going to forget first. You can always put it on later and turn it off and then put it back on later, which is another thing that we'll talk about, but that's later on. So number three is that digital does not mean clean and flat. When I first started using digital art or doing digital art, I thought that digital was all about clean lines, flat colour, minimal shading, but it doesn't have to be and you can be sketchy and painterly and you can add texture and life to your digital drawings. They don't have to be digital as in like a digital clock. <laughs> they can be more exciting than a digital clock. They can have colour and sketchiness and painterly lines and they don't have to be completely flat because I still struggle with this. I still try to draw in that style where there's just one black line around my drawings and then it's filled in with flat colour and then there's just like one layer of shade in it. It doesn't have to be like that. It can be as painterly 
and as traditional looking as you like. Digital is a really awesome tool. There are ways that you can make it look more traditional and yeah you don't you don't have to just do flat i don't know if anybody else thought that but i just thought i would throw it out there because i did another thing to think about is that <laughs> saving your progress is really and really really important computers crash all the time and you could get into your drawing and you could really really get into it and really spend hours and hours on this drawing and then your computer crashes and you're you haven't set up your backup system on your uh digital program and you have to start again well don't let that happen set up your auto saves and just get in the habit of pressing Control s all the time because that's generally usually the shortcut for saving your artwork and you can just press the button and then it saves and then you don't have to worry about it and I get into the habit of doing this quite a lot. I save the file before I even start and then every so often I will just press save especially I think when I'm actually using shortcuts I will do it more often like I'll use a shortcut say control z because I use that a lot and then I'll press control s as well just while I'm there so that it saves too because you do not want to lose all that work. I've done that before and it is soul destroying. <laughs> so number, I think we're on five, is that layers are really handy, but you don't have to actually use them. It is pretty fun to just paint on one layer and you can get more of a sketchy painterly look that way, but they are handy for things like, obviously, making sure you know where everything is. So if you want to draw eyes and you want to edit them later, but you don't want to disturb other layers of things then you can obviously pick the eye layer and you can also add effects like you can add like a lot of the times when I'm doing a portrait or whatever I will add a, I'll get a speckly brush and I'll brush speckles of blue and red all over my portrait and then I will decrease the opacity of that layer and turn it to multiply sometimes so that it looks like the face has a lot more colour underneath it like it's veins running through or blood or whatever and uh yeah there's loads of cool things that you can do with layers including masks clipping masks and things like that um but yeah you don't have to it doesn't have to be separate layers you can just do it all in one layer and i've done that occasionally and i find it really fun now, talking about shortcut keys in the last one when i said that saving was important shortcut keys learn them you will thank me later if you do not learn these then it will take a lot longer for you to do things that you wish that you could just do straight away like for example the shortcuts that i use the most are alt to pick the color from a certain area of my canvas i use the shortcut b and e to switch between my brush and my eraser and i also use s which is my blending brush and i use Control z obviously to undo what I've done and control s to save there are a bunch of shortcut keys I also use my pen I have a button on my pen that I press and that moves the canvas around and I also have space and that button at the same time to zoom in I think that does that does it zoom in I can't remember it does something but <laughs> yeah so shortcut keys are important if you want to increase your workflow increase the time or decrease the time that you spend on a drawing learn your shortcuts readjust them to the way that you like to do it it doesn't have to be standard keys you can do whatever you want like i don't do this so much in drawing programs but i do edit them in my editing program because i do find it much easier to edit videos when i can uh press the shortcut keys so I, I use D for delete and S for select and just normal ones like that instead of like control V for cut uh, which is paste actually control V for paste I would use control P for paste but yeah change your shortcut keys to suit you and learn them so another tip number seven is that digital art programs come with tools such as clipping masks like I mentioned, rulers, hue saturation sliders and a lot more other things and these should be used. These are perks to the digital world. They're features and they're not cheating. 
you can use these features to speed up your process, to help you get a more accurate result. You, it's not cheating. You can, that's what it's there for. It's digital. There's so much more things that you can use to help you get a drawing that you want. And it's a huge learning curve to learn all this stuff. It's not just easy one click of a button. You have to learn how to use it. You have to learn how to use it effectively and you have to learn how to make it look good. So it's not cheating. Use them to your advantage. Please use the tools provided in digital programs. Uh, there's even one in Clip Studio Paint, which Photoshop does not have, which is a model thing, a 3D model platform thing where you can import 3D models onto your canvas, you can pose them however you want and you can obviously copy that and get the proportions right. Obviously there's some technical glitches and things that you would think aren't right, like obviously the exact way that the hand would sit or look like as an actual person with skin <laughs> doesn't look the same but it can really help you pose uh, and use reference for that kind of thing and I think that's really cool how you can do that and you should be able to use it. Somebody asked about brushes a while ago on one of my videos and I said that I would talk about it but honestly the amount of brushes that are available to you in the digital world are astoundingly massive. There's lots built into the program that you've already got and there's lots that you can download and try and the best way to find out what brushes you should use is to test them to do artwork. Uh, obviously there are keys to what kind of uh, brushes you might like. If you watch digital artists and you think oh I really like the way that that digital artist is using that or obviously if you follow them on Instagram and you see their their um, pictures and you're wondering what brush they use then check the description to see if they've put it in. Also ask them if they have the brush that they are using try it and obviously if you don't like it then don't use it if you do then use it but a good way to do it is to just try the brushes that are already in the program and see what ones you like i really like the ones that are gouache like they're supposed to imitate gouache and they don't exactly but i really like the way that they blend and the way that they layer and the way that they are used so I use the gouache brush for most of my paintings. I also use the perfect pencil brush which I downloaded and you just need to try and figure it out. Procreate has brushes that are amazing and I didn't download, well I did download loads of brushes for, for Procreate when I first started but I downloaded the Willow charcoal brush which I really love to use but Procreate does have really good brushes and I do enjoy sketching and drawing with Procreate but so does a lot of other programs and you can find the ones that you like and you just need to play with them and do drawings with them don't just draw lines and say oh I like this one I'll use it do an actual sketch with them and see how it feels to draw properly and then if you don't like it switch to a different one and just keep going until you find the one that you absolutely love and uh, I wouldn't say that brushes are an important thing with digital art if you find the one that you use that you like the most and you can use that pretty much for the whole drawing and then obviously there are brushes that you can use for effects like I said the the speckling thing and maybe hair brushes or something like that but mainly I just use the same brush and it's fine and I encourage you to do the same and if I did a video on brushes I would literally just tell you the same thing so I don't think I'm going to do that video but I can go into more depth on any of these things that I've said in the video and more because like I said digital is so versatile, it's so vast and there's so much to talk about. So moving, stabilizers, all of that stuff is a must. I cannot draw straight lines in digital art or curvy lines, smooth lines in digital art. I can do it in traditional but when it comes to using digital programs it's really hard but that's why there are stabling smooth elizers and I used to be really really embarrassed that I used these when I first started digital art I was like this is cheating um it's a cr it's a crutch I shouldn't really be doing it and I didn't tell anybody that I was using it but I think that it's important because it depends on the program you're using, the tablet that you're, that you're using, how shaky your hand is and the response between the pen and the tablet itself because sometimes it can cause a shakiness that you're not actually doing. So 
it's a stabilisation feature for the programme itself to register how straight your marks are. Because you could do a nice swift straight line and it could come wobbly. And that's what the, the stabilisers are there for. So utilise the stabilisers. And my last thing is that it's so easy with digital art to flip your drawing to check to make sure that the proportions are right and it's not leaning because a lot of the time artists will draw more to the left than the right. And if you flip it, you'll be able to see. I did the flip at the very end of my Katie Charlie drawing and realised that it was really off. If you do it in the sketching stage, it will obviously show you your mistakes uh quicker so flip back and forth between the horizontal thing a lot while you're sketching you can do it ver vertically as well which helps but doesn't help as much as flipping it back and forth so those are all my things that I know about digital art obviously there is so much more but I don't want this video to be huge and if there's anything that you in particular would like to know about digital art I'll make sure to do that as soon as all this current event situation is up so that I can actually sit down with you and talk through some of the things that you might want to know about digital art or any other art or just the way that I do things. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to comment, like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it and I will see you next time. Bye.